Public Affairs Officer for the Greater Atlantic Regional Fisheries Office of NOAA Fisheries in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate you being here um, to hear more about what we have to say about the whales that are off our harbor right now and their interactions with the boats and what our team here is doing to protect these whales. So um, we have several speakers today. First up, we have Chad Hunter. He's the Town of Plymouth Harbor Master. We also have um, Bob Glenn. He works for the state of Massachusetts, the Division of Marine Fisheries. We also have Regina Asmus Sylvia um, with, with the Whale and Dolphin Conservation. You've probably seen her a lot on the news. She's been doing a lot of time down here as well. Um, um, Lieutenant Pat Moran with um, the Mass Environmental Police. Troy Ayuditis with um, NOAA's Office of Law Enforcement. And we also have a couple individuals here that are able to answer questions as well. We have Mandy Guerin from our Protective Resources Division, and we also have Jesse Diaz with the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn over to, to Chad to uh, do some opening remarks. So, Chad? Thank you, Allison. Um, my name is Chad Hunter. I'm the Harbor Master for the Town of Plymouth. I want to welcome you all to uh, Plymouth and the, this beautiful maritime facility. And as all of you know, uh, there's been a significant amount of uh, juvenile humpback whale activity off of the Manomat Point, uh, Whitehorse Beach area, in the last seven to ten days. Juvenile humpbacks are actively feeding on bait fish in the area, and the presence of a lar large aggregation of bait fish has attracted scores of recreational and commercial fishermen. And also the whales have attracted boats full of spectators looking to watch them feed in this easily accessible location. The Harbor Master Division has been working nonstop during this time to ensure that both the whales are protected to allow them to actively feed and to ensure that both recreational and commercial fishing activities can continue. This has been a unique challenge and why we welcome the assistance of our state and federal partners, including Mass Environmental Police, NOAA, the Whale Dolphin Conservancy, U.S. Coast Guard, and Division of Marine Fisheries. Their public outreach and education and assistance in law enforcement is both welcome and appreciated by the Town of Plymouth. I want to sincerely thank all of the town, town's partners. Uh, it's been truly impressive at how quickly we're able to come together, and plan and implement messaging, work with the media, and conduct patrols at the area. Since Sunday, we've had daily planning calls to continuously assess the situation, which has proved invaluable. So thank you. Thank you, Chad. And next, um, Bob. Good morning, everybody. My name is Bob Glenn. I'm a chief biologist with the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries, and I, I oversee, among other things, our protected species program. Uh, Division of Marine Fisheries continues to monitor three juvenile humpback whales that have been observed feeding off of the coast of Plymouth this past week or 10 days. Uh, these young whales are engaged in surface feeding activity, and they're very unpredictable while feeding in shallow waters on dense schools of manhaden, also called pogies. Um, these pogies are a really rich and abundant uh, food source for, for whales. Uh, these schools also attract striped bass and scores of uh, recreational and commercial fishers uh, who in vessels to target them. Um, this creates a safety hazard for both the whales and humans. Uh, DMF advises all mariners operating vessels or personal watercraft in this area to exercise extreme caution. Um, these are very large animals. They can weigh anywhere between 40 and 60,000 pounds, depending on their age. Um, and the, and a collision or interaction with these large whales can cause severe damage to the vessel, um, uh, injury to the whales, or uh, even severe injury or even death to humans who would be, uh, happen to be hit by them. And so we really advise caution. Um, the shallow water and presence of encroaching vessels, along with the young age of these animals, may increase their unpredictability of this behavior. And we advise all mariners who observe surface feeding whales to maintain a safe distance. We understand these are majestic animals. The public really would like to view them, and that's, that's fine, but they need to do so at a safe distance for the whales' safety as well as their own. The, the large schools of manhaden that occur on the Commonwealth's waters are a seasonally abundant forage fish that both humpback whales and many species of fish feed on. Manhaden are, are highly regulated species. They're, they have a, uh, they're managed by harvest quotas, 
in Massachusetts, the harvest quota for Manhattan was filled on Wednesday, so the fishery closed on Thursday. Um, so while DMF cannot predict where and when these large aggregations of Manhattan will occur, how long they will persist, or whether or not uh, humpback whales will show up to feed on them, uh, we're fairly certain um, that with the increasing abundance of Manhattan in our waters and increased abundance and numbers of humpback whales, we can anticipate that these, times, these types of events may continue to occur in the future and possibly with, with increased frequency. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Um, and next, Regina from Whale Dolphin Conservation. Hi, my name is Regina Resnita Silvia. I'm the executive director of Whale and Dolphin Conservation and their senior biologist. Uh, Whale and Dolphin Conservation, also known as WDC, is a leading global nonprofit dedicated to the conservation of whales, dolphins, and their ocean home. Our North American office actually is located right here in Plymouth, um, which is convenient for the current events that we have here. <laughs> Uh, we work to protect whales, dolphins throughout, uh, throughout the uh, area. We have programs on the east and west coast, and we do that through outreach policy and science initiatives. Uh, we work with the Center for Coastal Studies to monitor the humpback whales that are found off the coast here, including these whales that uh, we're seeing off of Plymouth right now. We've been doing that for more than 15 years, and we're happy to serve as a resource of knowledge about whales and dolphins, especially those that are spending time in our waters right now. As everybody's been saying, the whales that are being sighted off of Manomet are humpback whales. These are juveniles, meaning that they're between one and four years old. Uh, so they're young animals that are inexperienced, like any juveniles, including human adolescents. They're high-risk behavior animals. Uh, they're not going to be paying attention to the boats or the people that are out there. They're very focused on food. Uh, as Bob and other people have been telling you, Tad, that the, they're here to feed on uh, pogies. They're these menhaden that are coming in close to the shore. Um, they are very food focused. They're not looking for anybody. They're not looking for anything except for food. A lot of the behavior that we've been seeing is a behavior called lunch feeding, uh, where they'll, we actually don't know how they find food, but they'll detect these very dense schools of fish. They open their mouths and they charge through them. Um, and again, they're not paying attention to anything that might be around other than the food. Um, these, these animals are not feeding in the wintertime, so they are completely obsessed with eating right now. Uh, so they, that's why we really want to make sure that uh, people are being safe out there. The interactions that we've seen recently uh, jeopardize the safety of everyone involved. Um, we're very concerned about the human safety. We're glad that nobody was hurt. Um, but as uh, you've also heard, that there can be significant damage to uh, vessels as well as the humans on board. If you think hitting a car with a deer is a bad idea, uh, think about a fiberglass boat with a whale. These, we, we are encouraging people to keep their distance, uh, to create a buffer zone around these animals. If you're out on the water with them, at least 100 feet. If you're on a 20-foot boat, that means about five boat lengths. So kind of use your own boat as a, a guidance to try and figure out how far away you should be staying from these animals. The safest way to watch these animals is from land, um, binoculars, cameras. Uh, it's a great way to do it. Uh, that's a, it's a really cool thing that we're getting to see here. Um, we just want to make sure that people are doing it safely. Um, it's, we did a study some years ago that indicate that at least 15% of these humpbacks that we see off the coast of Massachusetts have been hit by a vessel at least one time. Um, these are small boats that are hitting them. Uh, again, that's a concern for us, and as a result of that, we created a program called See Us Boat Watch Out in partnership with NOAA. Uh, we launched an online boater, a uh, free online boater course uh, that you can get at csbot.org, which can help you figure out how to more safely watch and navigate around these whales. And we really do encourage people to check that out. We Again, we want to make sure that people are staying safe. Uh, as the locals and tourists are flocking to Plymouth right now to catch a glimpse of these whales, um, we're amping up our outreach efforts. We've had our team out on different beaches and different places. We love that people are enthusiastic um, in seeing these whales. It really is a, an amazing opportunity. Uh, as I said, we just want to make sure it's done safely. Um, we, we love the interest in these whales. Um, we're hopeful that the enthusiasm will encourage actions to further conserve and protect these animals for future generations. Whales are a vital part of the culture and the economy of Massachusetts. We've got whale watching right here, uh, just, just in our, our port. Uh, they are incredibly important to us. They play a vital role in the health of the ecosystem and the health of our planet. Uh, so we want to make sure that they're staying safe and we want to make sure that people are staying safe. And to learn more about what you can do, uh, we would encourage people to either go to our social media or visit whales.org. We have more information on there. Thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you, Regina. And I'd like to point out there's some handouts over here to take when you leave, and among those handouts are the See a Spout flyer that um, has information on that. On that. Um, so next up, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Moran. Um, I think we're all here preaching the same message, and that's for voters to keep a safe distance if, they're, <clears throat> if they observe whales. So good morning and thank you all for being here today. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Patrick Moran from the Mass Environmental Police. The Massachusetts Environmental Police continue to work closely with our local, state, and federal partners in monitoring and protecting the juvenile humpback whales and boaters in the area. Um, I can't say this enough, and I, I just opened with it, but boaters need to keep, keep a safe distance when in waters where whales are known to be. While seeing these humpback whales can be an incredible opportunity, everybody should do so in a safe environment, and that means ensuring a safe distance between your boat and them. Lastly, I'd just like to remind people that the Mass Environmental Police will continue to have a presence at Plymouth Harbor to monitor the area, to conduct outreach, and to enforce the law in order to create a safe setting for boaters to recreate while ensuring marine wildlife is protected. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Moran. And last up, Troy Udettis with Nose <laughs> Office of Law Enforcement. Good morning, everybody. My name is Troy Audetis. I'm the Assistant Special Agent in Charge for NOAA Fisheries Office for Law Enforcement. Just want to echo Lieutenant Colonel Moran's message that, you know, the interagency cooperation here has been phenomenal between federal, state, local, and volunteer agencies all coming together for this common goal to educate the public on how important it is to stay safe around whales. Uh, it's been amazing. The most effective way to protect the whales and the people is through outreach and education. These flyers on this table are amazing. They're very well put together. I highly suggest grabbing some before you leave here today. It will outline what you do if you see a whale, how to approach that whale, who to call if you see a whale in distress. Uh, the literature is fantastic. Uh, NOAA Office of Law Enforcement, we have kicked up our patrols in the area. We are partnering up with Massachusetts Environmental Police. We have our own patrol vessels out on the grounds. We're conducting outreach and education with the fleet. We're handing out those very same flyers to the commercial fishermen and recreational boaters out there in the water. We need to get this message out there loud and clear, and we need your help as the media to get that message out loud and clear. Uh, no office law enforcement will continue to allocate resources to this event until it concludes. Thank you very much. Right, well, thank you, everyone. Um, last slide, please. Um, so here are some resources, and Regina mentioned the csbout.org website as well. Um, and we also, if you see um, any boaters that are approaching a whale or casting over a whale, or their lines or look like be chasing down a whale, this is our anonymous enforcement hotline to call. So please encourage your viewers to, to call that number. We also have our regional stranding and entanglement hotline up there as well. That is for, as, as Troy mentioned, um, if you see a, a whale in distress, you can call that hotline and you'll be directed accordingly. And lastly, there's my, my contact information for, um, for any fault media inquiries. And with that, we can go to Q&As. Like I said before, it's outreach and education. If we're out on the water and we actually see vessels you know, within that 100-foot approach, we will contact that vessel. We will let them know, you know, obviously, that's not the best practices. That's not a safe approach. Um, in the event that you know, issues arise to a different level, we have the Marine Mammal Protection Act, which is a federal law that protects marine mammals, including the humpback whales here. And there's two types of violations in the Marine Mammal Protection Act. There's a level A harassment, which is actions that could potentially injure or cause death to the marine mammal. And there's also level B harassment, which uh, alters the animal's behavior in the wild. So the Marine Mammal Protection Act carries fines, uh, civil penalties up to $11,000. Uh, also up imprisonment up to one year. And also forfeiture of the vessel involved. We would typically recommend uh, placing the engine in neutral, which would stop the prop, you know, so uh, that's part of our approach guidelines. Um, but yeah, that, like I said, the best thing possible is to just educate the public. A lot of people just get excited when they see the whales. They want to get a post on Instagram, if you will, or whatever other type of social media, which is all well and good, but we need to do that safely. You know, obviously for their safety as well as the whales, because like we mentioned before, these are 40-ton animals and, you know, small fiberglass boats is never a good combination. The humpback whales that we're seeing right now, 
and tight close to the, the shores here are, are here because there's dense aggregation of manhaden, also called pogies commonly. Um, these are really oil rich fish, the high, very high caloric intake. It's, you know, it's like the best rich whale food a whale could ever want. And so when they, when they come in these dense schools, um, it, it gives them a, a tremendous opportunity to, to eat these calorie rich um, and fish at a time when, you know, they're trying to fill, build up their fat reserves before the winter comes. So um, from my understanding is no, it's not something that we could predict. Um, I would anticipate that when those dense schools of, of manhaden disperse, it's very likely that the whales would leave. The, typically, whales are not going to stick around if the food resource isn't sufficient to make it worth their while. Um, so we, we have... so. We've seen these types of aggregations of manhaden with humpback whales feeding on them. Um, relative to what, what's occurring right over here on the coast of Plymouth, it may be a little bit uh, unique in that it's um, in the middle of, in, in a spot where that's very popular to fish for striped bass during um, the recreational and commercial fishing season for striped bass. And so that initially uh, attracted a lot of attention. And then the other aspect of it is, is with anything um, in, in today's world, social media gets the word out very fast. And so the, the ability for these things to spread like wildfire uh, is, you know, happens. So uh, first, let me just say from a Division Marine Fisheries perspective, what, what we have authority to regulate in the state is fishing activity. So specifically, I, we don't have authority to, to regulate just recreational boating. Um, but um, no, we don't, we don't have any intent relative to, um, at this point, to um, stopping either commercial or recreational fishing in the area. Again, we hope that um, the outreach efforts and enforcement efforts that law enforcement has been working on, um, as long as this, with, with your assistance, with general public awareness and education to, for folks just to use common sense and maintain a safe distance. Again, these schools of Manhattan are episodic and ephemeral. Um, it could literally dissolve in a, in a day and the whales would disperse. And so at this time, we don't have any plans at, at regulating fishing activity specifically in this area. So during our daily patrols, we typically see, the weekdays we're seeing a little less boat traffic, but um, we're gearing up for this weekend. We, we daily see probably between 100 to 200 um, boats in the area, recreational fishing. Um, currently, the commercial season for striped bass is open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so we see an increase in boats during those days. But it's, it's pretty much been steady. And we're seeing, we estimated that probably 90% of the boats out there are, are doing some, toward, some sort of um, striped bass fishing. It's, it's all about public safety. We want the public to be safe, and we want the whales to be safe. So our message is, you know, keep the distance. Stay at least 100 feet away. Don't pursue the whales. Don't harass the whales, or you're going to end up on the wrong side of the law. When we evaluate health assessments on whales, we can look at it from what we call, uh, from a vessel strike, we can look at it from what we call either sharp force trauma or blunt force trauma. Um, with sharp force trauma, we can often see those injuries externally, so we can look for cuts if it's, you know, get hit by a propeller. Uh, so you can see some wounds that are consistent with a skeg or a propeller, and you can um, evaluate that it's had an external trauma, some sort of abrasion in the, the epidermis, um, and then how far it may have been cut. What we can't do with a live animal is evaluate blunt force trauma. Uh, so blunt force trauma are things like broken bones, bruises, um, soft tissue damage, uh, that's not going to show up uh, on the if you look at the whale. So when blunt force trauma is evaluated, it's uh, usually during what's called the necropsy, um, which is when you uh, do an autopsy on, a, on an animal and you can cut it open and you can see if there were any sort of internal injuries on it. Um, thankfully, um, we don't have any whales here to necropsy, so um, that's a good thing. Uh, we can't say for certain that there wasn't any soft tissue damage or any sort of bruising or anything that happened because uh, we, we can't evaluate blunt force trauma. Um, we don't right now have the images that would be adequate to really even evaluate for sharp force trauma um, on that particular animal from where that part of the body hit down. So um, we have had no uh, reports of blood in the water um, that, that 
came from that incident. Um, we haven't seen anything that would indicate that there was uh, significant injuries to the whales, and so that's the that's the most that we can say at this point. And we certainly have a, a lots of indications, not because of this particular event, but just overall, we've seen distributional changes in uh, whales over the last you know ten years or so. Um, more more focused, the studies have been more focused on looking at where North Atlantic right whales are uh, moving. You know, anecdotally, I can say that we have had more sightings of whales in coastal Plymouth waters probably over, Ted, I don't know, was it the last five years when we had those uh, other humpbacks that came in uh, to Plymouth Beach? We've had minke whales that have been in the outer harbor uh, during the summer. So is it, is it anecdotally, it's not a study, I can say that we are more commonly seeing whales coming in closer uh, to the beaches here, and there are distributional shifts in fish and uh, whales that have been documented as a result of a change in climate. So, you know, I, I think we need more data to say that this is an expectation of things to come, but I don't think we should dismiss the fact that this may happen more frequently. I mean, I have, I, have, I genuinely have concerns for human safety. Like I said, these, they are, uh, they are not going to be paying attention to you. Um, so it's the onus is on people to pay attention to the animals. If they are, if you see the what we call bait boils, so you, it looks like rain on the water almost, where the where the pogies are starting to really school. You know that's a that's a likelihood that if there's a whale in the area, that's where it's going to come up. They're going after those dense schools. So if you see those bait boils, you know that's where you kind of want to. You don't want to go into them. <laughs> so you know you want to move away from them um, and make sure that you're keeping that distance there. You know if you're on a, if you're on a, a paddleboard or a kayak or something like that, you know. Definitely, it's it swims faster than you can paddle, um, so you're you want to be super careful um, about that and just kind of be paying attention to the direction, some of where the direction of travel. Um, when they're subsurface, uh, humpbacks have white flippers, and so sometimes you can see what looks like a green glow on the water um, from the phytoplankton makes the flippers look a little bit greenish. So if you're seeing sort of something kind of come up to the surface, it's green, it's telling you that the whales in the area. So kind of watching for stuff like that. Again, it's just a it's just a safety issue and uh, taking your engines on a neutral if you know out of gear putting them in neutral um, is is really important. Is so all those same tips that you've been hearing from everybody, um, or the you know that's that's what we that's what we're hoping for. We just want people to be safe. <laughs>